Gordon's going to bring our Bible readings today. Good morning to everybody. The first reading today is Psalm 87, verses 1 to 7. Seventy eight, it is too, and that's what I got printed. <laughs> you do pay attention. <laughs> A mascal of Asfa. My people, hear my teaching, listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from old, things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statues for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. The next reading, Proverbs 3, 13 to 18. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you can desire can compare with her. Long life is her right hand, in her left hand are riches and honour. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. blessed. Proverbs 4, 6-9. Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it cost all you have, get understanding. Cherish her and she will exalt you. Embrace her and she will honour you. She will give you a garland to grace your head and present you with a glorious crown. Matthew 25, 1 to 13, the parable of the ten virgins. At that time, the kingdom of heaven would be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all had become drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they're on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. As uh, John introduced me, you know that I work in aged care here at Berry and at Jeringong and Nara. And I listen to lots of stories and experiences of our elders. And I, as I do, I feel like I'm gleaning the wisdom of literally hundreds of years of lived experience. And the generation I pe of people I visit, um, some of you are of that generation, 
have lived through both fascinating and challenging times of great change, and they leave a wonderful legacy of wisdom that we can learn from. I get little snippets every day, and some of them I've actually written down and have around my house. Some of them are these, always wonder. Learn something new every day. Old age isn't all it's cracked up to be. There's only one you, so be authentic. The most important things in life are things. Well, our reading from Psalm 78 this morning reminds us that our faith is also something worth living and sharing too, worth passing on to our children and grandchildren, younger people we know. The praise word the deeds of the Lord, God's power and wonders, God's wisdom and commands, and encouragement to trust God, so that they in turn will continue to embody and grow the kingdom of God's love into the future. And as we look around our world and closer to home at the moment, it's easy to become despondent and give up a bit on that future. We question whether we can hope in the goodness of humanity. Can we hope that peace and justice will prevail? Can we hope that the light of Christ's love can shine in even the deepest darkness? Yesterday was Remembrance Day, and at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, we remembered those who died in the war that was to end all wars. But sadly, TV tells us every night that that's not so. I don't know if you're like me, but at times it's it's easy to feel overwhelmed and like everything is out of our control. But perhaps our readings from Proverbs and Matthew might shine a bit of light for us and give us some fresh hope this morning. So let me invite you to a wedding via Jesus' parable we heard read this morning. Jesus had just warned his disciples they were to face some terrible times, wars and rumours of wars, desolations in holy places, darkness. And yet he suggests that at that time, amid such times, the kingdom of heaven can still come amongst us, that it can be born within and beyond us. Jesus told the story that the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 young girls. Depending on the translation you read, they might be called virgins or maidens, but this morning I'm going to call them young girls. And they were to be part of a wedding party. And in those times, their role was to light the way for the groom as he went to meet his wife at her parents' house and take her back to their new home, which he prepared for the wedding feast. The lights were a little like the little lamps at the top right there. They were filled with oil and had a simple wick and uh, they, they lit the way. The girls lit the paths between the houses and they also served as a last-minute reminder to the guests that the celebrations were about to begin. The lamps shone the way much the same as they will across many countries today in the Diwali festival, which actually means a row of lamps. 
However, in this story, some of the girls forgot to take spare oil. And given they'd been waiting in the dark a long time, their lamps were fading. They asked their so-called so wise companions if they could borrow some of their oil. But the wise girls said, you need to go to the marketplace and get your own. Perhaps it was something that couldn't be shared in the story that Jesus is telling. And why the foolish girls were shopping, the bridegroom arrives, takes his wife to the wedding party in their new home. And unfortunately, the foolish ones miss out because even though they knock on the door, the bridegroom doesn't recognize them. Well, often the hidden meaning of parables takes a bit of thinking, and certainly this parable has been interpreted in lots of ways. But at its heart, I think all the interpretations in some way are actually telling a beautiful story. They're likening the coming of the kingdom of heaven to the culmination and consummation of a love affair and of the wisdom and light that illumines the path that brings the beloved together. Some commentators think the Hebrew listeners to Jesus would have thought the story was about the love covenant between Yahweh and the people of Israel which was often imaged in the form of a bridegroom and bride, like in the Song of Solomon. For Christian readers of Matthew's Gospel, it might speak of the love shared between Christ and an individual believer or the community of the church. Some see the fire, light, oil as symbolic of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, of the Spirit's role in uniting us with Christ and each other. But some see wisdom in this story, not just in the form of the young maidens, but in the wisdom that we read from Proverbs this morning. And this is the interpretation I want to focus on, that Perhaps this is talking about a love affair between human seekers and divine wisdom. This fits in well with the parables Jesus tells before and after this one, a parable of the talents. And then in um, the parable we know as the sheep and the goats that talk about the coming of God's kingdom and the need to live wisely to prepare for that. So what is the kingdom of heaven like? Well, so far, according to Matthew's gospel, we've got some wonderful images. It's like a lost coin that's been found. It's like a lamb that got lost and they went and found it. It's like mustard seed yeast, hidden treasure. We see it's surprising, it's unexpected, it's growing and it's precious. And perhaps it's easy to miss some of the surprises that the original hearers and readers might have got from this parable, because we've got a bit of a surprise here too. And it's the women. Only four of Jesus' parables were about women, and this is one of them. And even more surprising, not mature, experienced, knowledgeable, married women, but young, unmarried women. In the culture of the day, that was pretty much as low as you could go, with the possible exception of slave women, and perhaps some of these had been roped in for the occasion, we don't know. 
women had meaning and significance only and in as much as they were a member of a father's household of Beth Ab. They were primarily wife and daughter, and unmarried daughters were a financial liability and often unwanted, as they still are in some cultures. Um, fathers could sell their daughters into slavery and not be breaking the law. So I was surprised because in this parable, wise young girls are the key players. The light of the kingdom is in their hands and they are lighting the way. And it really was, would have been quite shocking. And in a sense, they play the role of intermediaries. They're the bearers of light and wisdom that link the bride and groom together that reunite them. Certainly, there are some resident resonances with the love linking human seekers and divine wisdom that was read for us from Proverbs this morning where um, human seekers are advised to love her, cherish her, embrace her. The wise maidens also shine a welcome and invitation to others. Come, come with us. And again, we get um, reminiscences of Lady Wisdom as she calls out in Proverbs. She's found at the marketplace early, at the places where the paths meet. She invites all to feast at her house, guided by her light. She is ready. She is prepared. So perhaps it's the oil, perhaps it's wisdom that actually makes the young women wise. You either have it or you don't yet. It's not something can be shared. You need to come and meet with wisdom and find her for yourself. Well, the other surprising thing about this parable, there were women, but they were young, very young, probably aged 12 to 17 at the oldest. And in Jewish thought, must, as the same today, Wisdom is more often associated with the elderly than the young. It's deemed to come from experiences of a long life well lived. It's associated with grey or white hair. But Jesus had already turned that notion on its head. Earlier in Matthew, Jesus had prayed, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. In Matthew 18, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And in Matthew 19, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. You might have learnt some songs back in Sunday school, and perhaps in our childhood we kept it pretty simple, but we might have had it a bit correct. I don't know if you, I'm not going to sing it for you. You'll be pleased to know, but I'll tell you the words. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Or perhaps these words, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. I can see a few nods. I think a few people remember them. I found that remembering that Jesus was in his early 30s when he died gives me encouragement to listen more carefully 
to young people's ideas and be open to their guidance. I find myself thinking, oh, that's a bit risky. They might not know the best way. They might like to try different ways, perhaps a new route. But perhaps we are called to walk on risky paths. Maybe that is the nature of the kingdom of heaven, an ever-expanding, evolving, living community that never settles for the status quo. In modern times, wisdom's got a bit mixed up in our globalised world. We're increasingly looking for new knowledge and experts and subject specialists to guide us. But unfortunately, narrow fields of specialization often rob us of perspective and they can blind us to the bigger picture. Institutionalized knowledge is equated with wisdom and we're sold the virtues of so-called smart technology, knowledge-based economies, artificial intelligence, counterintelligence, even smart bombs. But in contrast to knowledge, the wisdom that we read about today is characterised by her deeds, not by words, but by word made flesh, not rhetoric, but action, not talk, but walk. The writer of Proverbs describes wisdom as being more precious than jewels, a tree of life for everyone, and that all her paths are peace. In contrast to so-called smart bombs, the book of James reminds us that the wisdom from above is first of all pure, it is also peaceful, gentle, and friendly. It is full of compassion and produces a harvest of good deeds. It is free from prejudice and hypocrisy. Perhaps divine wisdom is the light with the potential to birth the kingdom of heaven in us all to bring us together as loved and beloved. Perhaps that's what Jesus is suggesting, that with wisdom, the kingdom of God can be born in each moment and that conversely, sadly, without wisdom, we'll miss out. I've got a simple definition of the kingdom of heaven. It's the place where God's love rules. It can be a place or a person, a relationship or a community. But when I pray the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, I'm believing in the possibility of living in a place where God's love rules in the here and now, on earth as well as in the afterlife. Jesus taught how the kingdom of God can be alive within each of us, that two or three, when we're gathered in his name, as we are this morning, he is here. And the light of this kingdom continually points us towards life, oneness in community, love and peace. And these are characteristics that when they're reflect, reflected in our lives, they spontaneously combust, if you like, and shine divine light out to our children, grandchildren, neighbours, friends. In this way, we're also heeding Psalm 78's exhortation this morning to pass that light on to future generations. Gandhi once said, even a single lamp dispels the deepest darkness. It doesn't have to be very dramatic. When I finished up at Eden to come and work here, one resident wanted 
to thank me for something. She asked if I'd go and see her. And I thought it might have been something significant. I was trying to remember if we'd had a visit that was particularly meaningful or perhaps she liked the church services. So when I got to her room, she said, I want to thank you for something, your smile. Now, that was a bit funny because it was during COVID and the entire time my face had been hidden with the mask. So I joked with her and I said, I don't think you could tell if I was smiling or not. She said, yes, I could. You've got smiling eyes. It doesn't have to be complicated. In the words of Martin Luther King, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. At the break of day in the morning, the lamps can go out, the lights can be turned off, for day has come. But until then, our job is simply to shine the God, light of God's love to those we meet, to try and reflect wisdom's light as best we can amid the darkness as we pray that God's kingdom will indeed come. Amen. Let us pray. God, I find myself heartbroken by the darkness I see all around me. So I ask, may I never forget that behind every human face, there is a family like mine and souls trying to live in a world that often tells them they are less than or unworthy. May I never forget the truth of your good news, that storing up riches here, withholding from others out of some misguided sense of superiority or right to judge, that treating one, anyone as less is not the way of love you modelled for us. May I remember to take every opportunity to let the wonders of your creation heal and uplift me, feeling sunshine on my face, sand and waves beneath my feet, gazing at treetop canopies or a bird in flight, for each can be proof enough of your love. May I remember that within all the chaos and upset in this world, your loving presence continues with us and your light is shining our way home. Amen.